Okay, so a few of you had questions about um, metric prefixes and engineering, engineering notation. Um, so I'm going to use this opportunity to just go over some examples of each. Um, hopefully this clears up anything that needs to be uh, cleared up. So we have some uh, standard notation here uh, on the left. Okay, I'm just going to convert these to scientific and engineering notation. If you want a, a refresher on how scientific and engineering notation work, you can watch the video that's posted on D2L. So I'll go through this pretty quickly because this should be um, a review. Um, so in order to go to scientific notation, of course, we have a decimal place here, and we need to uh, move the decimal place over until we have one non-zero number to the left of the decimal place, and then we keep the last non-zero number for scientific notation. So it's going to be 1.03, and we moved over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the fifth watts. Um, it's important that you keep on keep uh, your unit. Um, most of the numbers that we work with in this class will have a unit associated with them. Uh, and make sure you keep that unit. Just if you lose the unit, you can get, um, first of all, it can give you the wrong answer because you can forget what you were doing. Um, but also, if you don't have a unit on your answer, um, then the answer isn't as, quite as meaningful because we need to know what, uh, what the unit is. Okay, so make sure you include units with your answers. Um, now, if we want to do engineering notation, remember with engineering notation, the exponent just has to be a multiple of three. So the exponent, there it is, has to be a multiple of three. Now, you can go either direction. You can add or subtract if you want to. Um, I recommend just subtracting from it every time, in that way you... Uh, It'll clear, you know, sort of prevent any hope, help prevent mistakes, basically. So we have uh, 10 to the fifth. We subtract from that until we get to a multiple of three. Um, and so we subtract two, and we end up, we, we subtract two, and we end up with a multiple of three. If we subtract two, then we move this over two places. And that's it. So it's going to be 103 times 10 to the third watts. So, um, if you subtract from the exponent, then the coefficient is going to get bigger. So you can just stick to that technique. If you want to add to the exponent, that's fine. And then just remember the coefficient, the decimal is going to go the other direction. So if I if I really wanted to, I could go to um, th um, six, right? So I could add to this. So if I want to take this to six, then this would be 0 0.0103 times 10 to the 6, right? But we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick to um, subtracting just because it'll prevent mistakes, okay? And that way the coefficient's always getting bigger. Easy to remember. Okay. All right, so let's try this one. So we have uh, 2.5 million joules. So you have 3, 6, right? So 2.5 times 10 to the 6 joules. Now you notice we're already at a multiple of three, so we don't need to subtract or add. Um, so we're already in engineering notation. So it's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 6 joules is our engineering notation. Okay, so engineering notation, it just means you have a multiple of three in your exponent. So it could be 3, 6, 9, 12, etc., or negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative, and so forth. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we got We'll try this uh, this number here. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven. So nine point zero zero three. Remember, we want to keep everything up to that last non-zero number. Times ten to the eleventh BTU. And this we're going to subtract two to get to nine, which means we move over two. So nine hundred point three times ten to the ninth BTU. Okay. Okay. So now when we we deal with smaller numbers. Uh, decimals. Uh, so before we moved the decimal to the left, what happened there? Before we moved the decimals to the left, so now we have to move the decimal to the right. So let's start with this number here, 0 0.042 joules. So we move one, two, and since we moved to the left, it's 4.2 times 10 to the minus 2 joules. Okay? Um, and then this exponent, this is tends to trip people up sometimes, but we're subtracting from that, so we're making it more negative. Okay, so we need to go to minus 3, which means we move one place, right? So it's 42 
times 10 to the minus 3 joules. I don't know why it keeps doing that, sorry. Okay, and that's uh, that's how you do your scientific and engineering notation. Now, of course, you can skip right to engineering notation if you feel comfortable. That's totally fine. Um, we primarily use scientific notation to get to engineering notation. Um, but if I ask you to express something as engineering notation, make sure it has a multiple of three on the exponent. Okay. And here's, um, I'm not going to go over belabor this point, but here's all the answers. I'll post this um, as well. And then here's some more examples. I'm not going to go over these, but feel free. What I'll do is I'll post these. And then if you want to practice, you can practice and then you can check your answers. Okay. So the main reason we use metric, excuse me, engineering notation is to get the metric prefixes. Um, and so metric using a metric prefix is pretty, pretty easy once you get to the, the um, engineering notation. Okay, so basically we get to our engineering notation. So get to our engineering notation. And then we figure out which prefix is associated with it. If we want to use a colloquial term, which is like millions or billions or trillions of uh, whatever, um, we match it up. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you're basically substituting your, um, your engineering notation uh, with a metric prefix. Some important things I want, want to note. Number one, you cannot double up on a metric prefix. Right, so there's no kilo kilowatt or mega kilowatt or whatever. Um, only use one at a time. We tend to not use these with English units. We use these, it's a called a metric prefix, but we do use it with some. In the energy field, uh, it can get a little confusing, but we do use some metric prefixes, very limited. Um, but we use other prefixes that aren't technically metric. Um, to express large quantities uh, of energy and all, uh, especially with with the BTU. Okay, so we do kind of use them with BTUs, but we also use this sort of like weird imperial English metric prefix system um, with BTUs a lot in the energy field. And I'll go over some of those examples. Okay, so here's your basic metric prefix chart. Um, you should definitely jot these down. I will post some version of this on D2L. Okay, but you can see here that everything is your um, multiple of three, except for these. There's a couple of exceptions that we won't really use in this class. Um, but we have our, the main ones you'll use are M for mega, this is a million, G for giga is a billion, K for kilo is a thousand. Those are the main ones. We'll use, might use some small ones, but usually in the energy field, kilo, mega, giga, tera, those are the ones you'll see more than anything else. Okay, so how do you use these? Um, basically, you convert to engineering notation and then you s just uh, substitute the prefix. So I have your prefix chart up here on the right. Um, so let's just do a couple examples. So we have 22 million watts. Right, so our scientific notation is 22.2 times 10 to the 7th. Convert that to engineering is to 22 times 10 to the 6th. Now we look for, if we want to find 10 to the 6th, let me go over my chart here, right? So 10 to the 6th up here is a million, which is mega, or capital M, right? So it's just 22 megawatts. So we go from a really, oh, almost directly substituting this whole thing with the prefix, right? And that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then the colloquial term, if you use, is 22 million watts. So we'll do joules, 22 billion joules as an example. So 2.2 times 10 to the 10th. Subtract 1 to get to 22 times 10 to the 9th joules. So let's figure out what 10 to the 9th is giga. Okay. So 22 gigajoules. And then that, the colloquial term is billion, 22 billion joules. Okay. Um, this is a small number, I'm not going to count the zeros, but it's 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8th meters. Now remember we need subtract, so we're going to subtract 1, we get 54 times 10 to the minus 9th. Let's look up 10 to the minus 9th up here it is actually lowercase n or nano. So 54 nanometers, not nanometers, but nanometers. And then our colloquial term is billionth of a meter, so 54 billionths of a meter. And that's really it. Um, 
again in the energy field we use a lot of the larger numbers not some not the smaller ones as much uh, a couple uh, one really 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 important thing I want to note is a million BTUs is a really common unit used in the energy field and we um, use the term MMBTU so if I ever say the term MMBTU or, or you ever hear the term MMBTU that is a million BTUs again it's a really common unit in the energy field okay so let's just do a quick example uh, or two um, so we have this number 42,300 watts so the scientific notation is going to be 4.23 times 10 to the fourth watt hours excuse me watt hours so we get 10 to the fourth we subtract 1 42.3 times 10 to the third watt hours 10 to the third, if you look up on your chart, is kilo. So it's 42.3 kilo, lowercase k, very important, watt hours. And then our colloquial will be 42.3 um, thousand watt hours. Okay. Um, we'll do this one here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Okay, and remember we need to subtract from this, so it's going to be subtract 2 to get to 6. So it's 300 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And then this, if you look up 10 to the minus 6, is micro, which is a mu, microm. Some people refer to that as a micrometer. Okay, so, uh, and then the last one here is 9.003 times 10 to the, what do we got, 6 BTU. That's the same in, oops, what the heck? Sorry. That is the same in uh, engineering, so because it's already in a multiple of 6, or multiple of 3, excuse me. And then remember, in the energy field, that's an MMBTU, so that's going to be 9.003 MMBTU. Okay? And then colloquial would be 9.003 million BTUs, or MMBTU is pretty common. Okay? Um, so I posted all these answers here, and um, that hopefully gives you enough practice. Um, and if you have any, any additional questions, uh, please let me know, but hopefully that helps.